Hi Lena, welcome on board to this Q&A session on this particular topic, Angle of Attack. Getting an outline of this session, we'll be getting to know about question analysis, book reference, important concepts, formulae, and solutions. Now switching on over to the blog containing the Gate Aerospace material. So here I am on the Age of Aerospace blog and uh, Gate Aerospace tab. Now scrolling down to the flight mechanics portion. So here we are on the flight mechanics portion of the syllabus. So the question analysis is particular to this uh, portion basics. And here we have our question analysis. And regarding the topic angle of attack, here we can see there were about two one mark questions asked in 2017 and 18. Similarly, there were two two mark questions asked in 2007 and 8. Now getting to the book reference. Regarding this topic, uh, the topic is in concentrated instead it is scattered uh, around the book uh, Introduction to Flight by J.D. Anderson and you can get a better insight or common perspective by Google Flight Sensor. So here uh, regarding the important concepts, you need to be comfortable with the unit conversion that is from degree to radians and radi radians to degree. So for converting a value from degree to radian, you need to mul multiply it by pi by 180 and vice versa for converting a value from radians to degree, you need to be multiplying with uh, 180 by pi. So for easily remembering, you can see that uh, the values in radians are always less. In quantity, there is 0, 0.0 in terms of. So if you need to get a decent value in degrees, you need to multiply it by large number. So 180 will be in the numerator. Now here we have uh, other important concepts regarding this. So if the angle of attack is higher or greater, the lift produced will also be increased with respect to the angle of attack. Similarly, as lift increases, the drag also increases. And one other point to be noted is that uh, after a certain limit, to set, uh, let's consider a CL versus alpha plot, uh, after a certain lift quantity, the airfoil or the air wing starts to stall. So this is uh, the point known as stall where the aircraft or wing starts to lose its lift. Now uh, the uh, concept of zero lift co coefficient is always important because it depends on the type of airfoil such as uh, for symmetric airfoil, uh, considering a CL versus alpha plot, we can see that uh, at zero angle of attack, it produces no lift. And uh, for uh, gambered airfoil at zero angle of attack, we can see it uh, produces some form of lift. So this point needs to be known. We need to know about the factors affecting the angle of attack, such as flow direction, the uh, magnitude at which it is approaching and other factors. Regarding the formulae, before knowing the formulae, we need to know the velocity components and its distribution. And uh, you also need to know about the diagrammatic representation of this. So if we consider an aircraft, the velocity in uh, X or uh, longitudinal direction is termed as U. And similarly in Y direction or lateral direction, it is small v and uh, in z axis it is termed as w and uh, based on these three velocities there will be a resultant velocity capital v so this resultant velocity can be obtained from the pythagoras, pythagoras theorem as square root of u square plus v square plus w square now we have uh, better understood this so now uh, the angular variations in different uh, perspectives provides us with the values of angle of attack and side slip angle. Now, if we, if we consider uh, the angle of attack case, so from a longitudinal axis or a plane, we can see that uh, this variation between the resultant velocity vector capital V and uh, local x-axis velocity vector u is termed as the angle of attack. So by applying basic uh, trigonometric relation, we can obtain the value of alpha as uh, by using the tan value. So here it is, the formula is tan alpha is equal to W by U. That's nothing but we know that tan is opposite by adjacent side. 
So tan alpha is opposite side which has a magnitude of W by adjacent side which has a magnitude of U. Now when we transfer this tan from LHS to the RHS, it gets into the inverse term. So we obtain the alpha or angle of attack as tan inverse of W by U. So you might be using these formulas so it is better to uh, know how did we arrive it and uh, how to use it. And it's high time, let's get solving. So here we have our first question. So this is a one mark question from uh, Gate 2017. The question reads out as which one of the following statement is not true. So one thing over here is that uh, read out the question carefully because they have mentioned not true. So we have to find out the wrong statement. So out of these four options, we can see that uh, the first of uh, every option talks about something. And uh, let's find out the uh, particular concept which they are uh, talking about in common. So here, the pitching moment of any airfoil at any angle of attack is always zero at center of pressure. So they are basically talking about uh, pitching moment and center of pressure. Similarly, in option B, they are talking about the pitching moment of any airfoil at any angle of attack is always zero at aerodynamic center. And uh, the center of pressure and aerodynamic center coincide for symmetric airfoil. Similarly, in option D, the option is uh, reads out as uh, the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center for any airfoil does not vary with angle of attack. In all these options, we can see they are talking about center of pressure, aerodynamic center, and their relative pitching moment with respect to angle of attack. So before uh, getting to answer this question, we need to know what is center of pressure and uh, aerodynamic center. Now based on the definition, so center of pressure is a point about which uh, the aerodynamic pressure field may be represented by a single force vector with no moment. That is consider this is an airfoil. So there is a pressure force acting all along the airfoil. It may be totally varying. So when we take a common point or a resultant point at which we can represent all these uh, forces based on the average value, that point is known as center of pressure. So at this particular uh, point, there is no moment acting on this point. So similarly, aerodynamic center. The purpose of uh, or need of aerodynamic center is that center of pressure may be varying. So if we vary the angle of attack, the pressure values will be varying on the upper and lower portion, similarly on the front and rear portion. So the point may be shifted either forward or rearward along the line. So we need a stable point which does not vary. So here we define an aerodynamic center. So it is the point on an airfoil where pitching moment produced by the aerodynamic forces is constant with angle of attack. Now the two things which we need to know is that at center of pressure there is no moment that is moment t is zero and uh, in aerodynamic center the moment is in zero instead it is constant so these are the points which we need to remember now based on this we can say uh, relate the question so the pitching moment of any airfoil at any angle of attack is always zero at center of pressure yes it is with the first case so this option is correct but we need to find the wrong option so we will be leaving out this. So here the pitching moment of any airfoil at any angle of attack is always zero at aerodynamic center. Now this is the case with the center of pressure not with the aerodynamic center. So this is uh, the wrong option. So as we need to find the statement which is not true, this may be the right answer. Let's check the other options too. So the center of pressure and aerodynamic center coincide for air symmetric airfoil. As I said, for symmetric airfoil, the pressure distribution will be symmetric about the upper and lower surface. So the center of pressure and aerodynamic center will be coinciding at a single point. So the variation will be zero. Right. So this is also a correct statement. So for this, it isn't appropriate. So here, the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center for any airfoil does not vary with angle of attack. This statement is also true, so this may not be wrong. 
So based on this, our uh, answer should be option B, the pushing moment of in, any airfoil at any angle of attack is always zero at the aerodynamic center. We have found out the uh, wrong answer, which is the need for this pattern. Option B is the right answer. So here, here is another one mark question from uh, gate 2018. The question reads out as a NACA 0012 airfoil has a trailing edge flap. So the airfoil is operating at an angle of attack of five degrees with undeflected flap. If the flap is now deflected by five degrees downwards, the CL versus alpha curve will. So they are basically asking what will happen if we deflect the flap by five degrees in downward direction. Here we can see NACA 0012 is a uh, symmetric airfoil. But for this question, this has nothing to do as of now. Uh, regarding the uh, deflection, so here we can see an airfoil and uh, similar two of, uh, options for deflecting the flap. So consider this to be a flap. We can see it can be either deflected up, uh, upwards or downwards. Now, if it is deflected downwards, then that deflection is in, uh, considered as negative deflection as it is in downward direction. So if the deflection is negative, then the curve CL versus alpha curve will be shifted left side from the existing curve. So if the deflection was upwards instead, the curve would have shifted right but towards the, the right. And uh, we can see there is no change in the slope. The uh, slope is uh, remaining constant. Instead, just the uh, curve is shifting in direction. Now uh, checking out the options, here we can see the CL versus alpha curve shifts right and slope increases. No, it uh, shifts left. So this option is the wrong one. And uh, shifts left, uh, left and uh, slope increases. Here we can see uh, it does shift left, but uh, the slope remains the same. So this is also a wrong option. Shifts left and slope stays the same. So this may be the right answer as the curve has shifted left but and the slope is same the d option is that it shifts right and slope stays the same no the uh, deflection of flap is downwards so the curve will shift leftward now checking out the answer here we can see that uh, option c is the right answer as i said uh, if the flap is deflected downward the curve shifts left and if the flap is deflected upwards the curve shifts right so in either cases the slope remains the same so this is what we need to keep in mind now here we have a two mark question from uh, gate 2007 so the question reads out as wing a has a constant chord c and span b wing b is identical but has span 4b so this is b when both wings are operating at the same geometric angle of attack at subsonic speed, then. So they are basically comparing two different uh, wings, A and B. Both are having same chord. So the chord is nothing but the measurement from leading edge to the trailing edge of an airfoil. But instead, uh, we can see that the wing B is having span. Span is nothing but the distance between the wing tip to the other wing tip. So uh wing a is having span of b and uh, wing b is having span of 4b so with this case they are asking that uh, when both the wings are operating a safe geometric angle of attack at subsonic speed then wing a and b produces same lift coefficient or uh, wing a produces smaller lift coefficient than b or wing a produces greater lift coefficient than b or the phase stream Mach number decides which produces greater lift coefficient. So the point of interest over here is lift coefficient and not lift. We can see that uh, lift is dependent on uh, aspect ratio or area. So based on that lift will always increase if we increase the span as four times or uh, how many times irrespective of it. So uh, lift may increase but here all the options are talking about only a lift coefficient and not lift. 
So lift coefficient is independent of uh, span effects or span uh, length. So lift coefficient remains the same for that particular airfoil, ideally. So based on this, both uh, wing A and uh, B should produce same lift coefficient. So option A must be the right answer. Let's check out the answer key. As per answer key, option A is the right answer. So we are good to go. Now here we have another two mark. Uh, this is a two mark question from uh, year 2008. And uh, you can see the question reads out as which of the following statement is true for an aircraft flying at low angle of attack. So if the angle of attack is low, they are basically asking uh, this is also associated with roll pitch and yaw that uh, particular lecture will be coming forward. So here, yawing motion generates yawing moment and pitching moment. Rolling motion generates rolling moment and pitching moment. Yawing motion generates yawing moment and rolling moment. Pitching moment generates yawing moment and rolling moment. So they are basically uh, uh, asking that if we perform one particular uh, motion yawing motion or uh, pitching motion or rolling motion it must be associated with some other kind of motion so what is it now we can see this is the yawing motion basically and uh, if we are performing yawing motion you can see that uh, when the aircraft is uh, yawing about one particular side uh, the other side or uh, we can see in this case the left wing experiences uh, a greater approach angle or it uh, encounters uh, before the right wing encounters with the face wing so this will result in additional lift generation for the left wing which will uh, be further associated with the roll so an yawing motion will generate a corresponding rolling motion or rolling moment so this is what the case must be so, and uh, this is the case where uh, Dutch roll is also considered. So this must be the right answer. Let's check out that. So uh, as far as other options are considered, mm -hmm. here you can see yawing motion generates yawing moment and pitching moment. This is not uh, that significant. So this can be striped out. Rolling motion generates rolling moment and pitching moment. If instead of pitching moment, it was uh, yawing moment, it might also be a right answer so here this is also goes and pitching moment generates yawing moment and rolling moment uh, this is also a wrong option so here as i said a yawing motion causes additional roll or roll can also cause yawing moment and uh, this occurs due to unsymmetric encountering of wing with free stream as i said for this left wing starts to encounter well before of the right wing so there is an, some un symmetric uh, phenomenon occurring over here which results in higher lift at uh, the faster approaching wing or lift wing and the aircraft rolls in particular action. So as we discussed option C, yawing motion generates yawing moment and rolling moment must be the right answer. That's it for this session. Let's crack gate aerospace.